Hey, welcome back compadres. Today we're talking petroleum engineering and Monte Carlo simulation. This is going to be some action packed stuff and I'm going to simplify it for you guys so that you can easily do this and uh, apply it to a variety of engineering applications. And also we're going to step through and learn how to fit distributions to data and then make an interpretation from it to determine our P90, P50, P10 and our confidence uh, values that uh, you would want to do if you were going through an analysis. So guys, let's get started. Monte Carlo simulation is one of the most powerful tools an engineer can have in his toolbox. It basically allows you to model variables as distributions and then running several cases uh, to come up with you know another distribution and then from that you can make inferences from the data that you get. But essentially how it applies to oil and gas is there's variables that have uncertainties across the board. I mean it's amazing. Your permeability values can vary, your pressure values can vary, uh, basically any variable can vary uh, from field to field and Monte Carlo simulation captures those uncertainties and from that we can uh, basically make a good engineering interpretation of what we're looking at depending on what model we're applying. But essentially how it works, this image right here basically summarizes it as best as I could do it. Um, but essentially what you have is you have inputs, they call them random variables, that which essentially have a wide range array of values and you can model them as distributions. So for example we could model x1 as a normal distribution, x2 is logarithmic, x3 is a uniform. You know, there's just several distributions you can use to model these inputs. And then once you've modeled your your input values, your random variable values, you can generate a random number and using the cumulative distribution function of the distribution that you're using, um, you can generate a value between 0 and 1 because the area under these curves is equal to 1. Generating the value between 0 and 1 allows you to um, basically capture the range of values under this, uh, this curve. And so if you generate random values for each of these variables, you can get a value and then you can plug it into your model which can contain several random variables, also constants, and then you can get data from that. And you you do this multiple times so you iterate and then once you've iterated uh, several times it can be a thousand cases, ten thousand cases, a hundred thousand, whatever uh, you know just do it to where you feel comfortable with then you can uh, you have a array of data that you can arrange on a probability plot as shown here in a probability plot, if you haven't seen this before, it's also kind of alluded to as a quartile quartile plot. But essentially what this plot does is it allows you to fit a straight line interpretation of any distribution, such as the standard normal, the logarithmic, Weeble, exponential, whatever, and then run a straight line through it and it allows you to see whether your distribution fits that data and you can compare different distributions on the same playing field and that's the advantage of a probability plot and we'll go into that in the next slide but after you've you've gotten your your outputs and you've modeled it as a mathematical distribution um, you can go determine your P90, P50, P10 which which we always use in oil and gas so probability plots is probably one of the things that uh, you may or may not be familiar with, but it is really cool because it allows you to model your distribution as a linear line. So we're all familiar with y equals mx plus b. This is easy to understand. We've done this since, I mean, elementary school. We were taught this. So what it allows you to do is to perform linear regression to see if your distribution fits through the data nicely and you can use a metric known as the coefficient of determination uh, in Excel it's, it does it for you you can use that to determine how well your data your trend line fits through the data 
and and from that you can compare distributions or squared values and see which one uh, works the best for your application and so that's really the value of a probability plot and then uh, you can fit a mathematical model through your data and you can uh, make an interpretation from it so the steps to make a probability plot you can find this in online I basically outlined them right here but the key step uh, step number one sorts your your output data from smallest to largest that's key for what we're doing and then you have to define your quantiles and your quantiles are um, you know there's several equations for it. quantiles basically how you segment your data uh, and uh, use it uh, for your cumulative distribution function but we have um, you can see here we have three equations here I'm going to use this one right here where n is going to be your total number of, of data points and i is going to be your sample number depending on uh, a rank um, of the data that you're looking at for example if you sort it from s smallest to largest your i equals one is going to be your smallest value and it'll go all the way to n n being your largest value and so you can do that to uh, research that more if you want to but this is the uh, the meat and potatoes of this presentation this right here is really cool you can model your distributions as linear lines by simply just algebraically manipulating the cumulative distribution function for each distribution so for example we've all seen this the uniform distribution can be modeled by this function right here where A is your minimum value, B is your maximum value, F is your cumulative uh, value, and X is your, your the value of your variable. Um, <clears throat> and so what you can do here is just by simple algebraic manipulation, you can rearrange this equation in the form of this right here, where B minus A is your slope, and A is your intercept, F your cumulative value is going to be x and y is going to be your your random variable values and so you can see here you can plot your x versus f and then draw a straight line through your data points b minus a is going to be your slope and a is going to be your intercept so you can determine your your two unknowns graphically and then you can uh, then you effectively modeled your your uh, data with the best fit distribution for the uniform distribution after you've run linear regression of course and so the same thing for the normal distribution this is uh, the cumulative distribution function for the standard normal distribution and you can see here we can rearrange this algebraically put it in the form of a straight line and we can put our data on there x versus z and then our slope is going to be uh, our standard deviation and the intercept is going to be our mean of that data so for logarithmic or I'm sorry log normal this is your cumulative distribution function rearrange it in the form of y equals mx plus b and I'm sorry but this should be sigma star this should be mu star too and uh, you can see here you get a straight line and you can run linear regression on your data by plotting the natural log of x versus z and get your sigma star your your mu star and you've modeled it and the Weeble distribution the same way of course it's a little more involved you gotta apply natural logarithms but if you do it you can algebraically rearrange it in this form where 1 over b is going to be your slope and the natural log of a is going to be your intercept and um, so we have we plot it here and you can get those two parameters from your graphical fit and model it and then for exponential the we can do the same thing but so you understand what's going on here uh, basically we're, we're putting everything in y equals mx plus b form to get it on the same playing field and then we can uh, see which distribution best fits the data but you can see here for exponential um, the only thing that changes here is our b is equal to zero so it goes through the origin 
you got to foot it through the origin and then b is going to be our slope but we have uh, x versus the ln of 1 over 1 minus f and we've done it so that that's essentially how that works i suggest if uh, you don't understand it go through this but once we've compared everything on the same playing field we can go ahead and determine our p90 p50 and p10 p90 being our highest uh, probability to exceed p50 being our most likely and p10 being our lowest probability to exceed or our highest value that we we get so that would be like over here for p10 and our p90 would be down here so that's essentially it that that's how we do it and this is uh, really cool we're going to go through an excel example uh, to show you how this works just building off of what has been discussed so far we're going to look at some uh, a well that we've looked at and we'll, we'll try this out and uh, you know i think you'll understand it better after we go through that exercise so guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one adios